summary of one act play mother's day written by jb priestley mrs pearson and mrs fitzgerald are neighbors one afternoon mrs fitzgerald visits mrs pearson the two women sit comfortably in the living room while taking tea mrs fitzgerald tells mrs pearson her fortune with the help of cards according to her mrs pearson's problem is that she is excessively fond of her husband and children she runs after them all the time takes their orders as if she were the servant in the house and stays at home every night while they go out enjoying themselves they have come to believe that she is simply there to wait on them so they take no notice of her mrs fitzgerald advises her that she should assert her rights as the mistress of her house if she wants them to treat her properly mrs fitzgerald asks her to let them wait or look after themselves mrs pearson says that she can't do it mrs pearson is puzzled at this mrs fitzgerald tells her plan and says that they would change their personalities with each other she had learned this art when she was in the east mrs pearson hesitates but mrs fitzgerald holds her hands asks her to keep quiet and do not think about anything and look at her The two women stare at each other Mrs Fitzgerald recites a spell gradually their personalities change bodies now Mrs Pearson is bold and domineering while Mrs Fitzgerald is nervous and agitated after a few moments Dor Pearson enters the room violently and orders her mother to iron her yellow silk as she is to wear it that night she is astonished to see her mother smoking mother has not mm, got her tea ready She is in no she is in no mood to iron her yellow silk for her. She is rather thinking of going out and get a meal at the Calerandon. Doris is astounded at unusual behavior of his mother. Then she tells her mother that she is going out with Charlie Spence. Mother severely asks her whether she could not find anybody better than buck teeth and half-witted Charlie Spence. This is too much for Doris. She runs out of the room with tears in her eyes. Then Cyril Pearson enters. She has not put his things out though she has promised that morning to look through them in case there was any mending. He wonders that he wonders what is going on in the house he stands aghast when she tells him that she wants stout uh, to drink and moves to the kitchen she takes a bottle of stout and half filled glass cyril and doris are unable to control their laughter mrs pearson looks at them with contempt and asks them to behave like grown ups with tearful eyes doris asks why she is talking like that and what wrong they have done she asks mother whether she has fallen or hit herself with something mother rebukes her for asking such a silly question doris begins to cry mother coldly asks her to stop crying noisily like a baby just then george pearson enters he notices doris's tears and asks why she is crying doris runs out of the room sobbing he is astonished to see his wife sipping stout he tells her that he He tells her that he does not want any tea as he would have supper at the club. Mrs Pearson tells him that there is no tea ready. He is annoyed to know that his wife didn't get tea ready for him. Mrs Pearson laughs at his childishness and remarks that if he behaved like that at the club they would laugh at him even more than they do now. George is surprised to know that they laugh at him at the club. Mrs Pearson continues that he is one of their standing jokes. They call him Pompey Ompy Pearson because they think he is slow and pumps. George is shocked. He staggers out of the room. There is a knock at the door. Cyril hurries out and re-enters bringing in Mrs Fitzgerald. She asks mrs pearson whether everything is all right cyril remarks sulkily that everything is wrong mrs pearson asks him sharply to keep quiet cyril walks out of the room mrs fitzgerald is surprised at the turn of events and asks mrs pearson nervously what she has been doing mrs pearson tells her calmly that she has been just putting them in their places and they will be eating out of her hand soon just then george enters the room he is looking very sullen mrs fitzgerald watches all this helplessly 
She is utterly confused. She tries to stop Mrs. Pearson in vain. George and Doris are bewildered at this turn of events. They stare at Mrs. Fitzgerald. She requests them to leave her alone with Mrs. Pearson and promises that everything will be all right. George and Doris leave the room. Mrs. Fitzgerald urges Mrs. Pearson that they should now regain their proper personalities. Mrs. Pearson wants to continue a bit more of it, but Mrs. Fitzgerald would not listen to her. She says that they are already very miserable and she can't bear it anymore. She stretches uh, her hands across the table eagerly. Mrs. Pearson uh, takes them. They stare at each other and exactly as before Mrs. Pearson recites the spell, they become their proper personalities. Mrs. Fitzgerald advises Mrs. Pearson not to go soft on them again, otherwise it will all have been wasted. Mrs. Fitzgerald warns her that she must not start giving explanations, asking for apo apologies, otherwise she will be straight back where she was. Uh, when Mrs. Fitzgerald leaves the room, she finds George, Doris and Cyril standing in a row at the doorway. The family looks anxiously at Mrs. Pearson. She smiles. They feel much relieved and they smile back at her. Mrs. Pearson tells them what she thought they would do at night. They would have a nice family game of rummy. The children would get the supper ready while she has a talk with their father. Thus, Mrs. Fitzgerald helps Mrs. Pearson to become the boss of her family. When she goes out, the family lovingly clusters around mother.